Hey guys, this is Forsaken Reality here with a new tutorial series, and in this one we're going to be creating Squid Game. Squid Game is a TV show on Netflix where a group of players are made to play a series of children's games with a lethal twist. <clears throat> if they lose the game, they're killed, basically. So the first game we're going to be making in here is called Red Light, Green Light, and this is how it's going to work. Basically, there's no movement. It'll have some sounds. You can't move. I'll also show you where to download these sounds and stuff. Models. And you can move once it starts. If she says red light, you're gonna wanna stop. Green and it matters light. when her head finishes twisting around. That's when she, when her head finishes twisting, that's when she'll actually kill you. Green light. And if you enter the zone over here, red light. you can't die, and after a few seconds. You'll complete the game. The game will restart, start. And I can't press anything now. Other than take my mouse. But if I'm running and she twists her head around and sees me, then I die. And we also have it set up so the game will restart if you die. So without further ado, we will get into creating this one. We'll also look into creating the other games in Squid Game in later on parts of the series. But in this one, we'll look into the doll and get the the uh, actions throughout this mini game and the end game volume. We'll be using a volume to control if we're in the end game zone. And I also have a setup so if you leave the end game zone within the few seconds that you're. Uh, not restarting your game, you can actually still die. To give it make it a little more lethal for players. So without further ado, we will start creating this. First thing I'm going to do is just drag over my test copy here out of the way. And right now I just have a third blank third person project here. You can pause the video here and create that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'm just going to delete this. And I'm just going to organize my files quickly. So I'm going to put my geometry in the maps just so it's there. Fix up redirectors and save. Delete geometry. Mannequin. Select these two folders my third person BP. Move here. Fix up redirectors. Save all. Delete the mannequin folder. Open up my meshes folder. S select all. I'm just going to select the first one. Hold shift and click the last one. And I'm just going to put those in my geometry folder here. Fix up redirectors. Save. And then you just delete this third person folder. And you're left with this folder with all your basics in it. I'm just going to rename this to Game Core. And fix up redirectors one more time and save. And in Blueprints, I'm just going to. Make the characters folder, move him into the characters folder. Fix up redirectors, save. So now we are set. So the first thing we're going to need is some models. So I got my models from, I don't think I'm allowed to release the downloads for them, but but I'll release the link, the link for the act to actually, you can actually go and get them and just click the download 3D model and download the FBX. And also, I'll also leave a link for these masks that I found, and I had to bring them in the blender, and just I just deleted the two side masks. And then you can just replace the texture on this one, and it'll just replace it fine. And that's just optional. That is not really part of it. Um, and I'll also leave a link for this right here, this soundboard for the Squid Game, which has all this, all these... Uh, Sounds red like red light, green, green light. light. It's a pretty useful one right here. 
put some free music on there, or free sounds, or loads of different things, but specifically I got them for the Squid Game. And you're going to get those in MP3 format. So you're going to want to come, I'll leave this in the link too. And you, and you basically just download the files, select the file. And you can hold shift and select multiple files and open them. And then you'd want to convert them, make sure it says um, MP3, which is so it automatically say it if it's an MP3, and then you convert it to WAV, to wave. And uh, that'll be that for those. I already have mine converted, so I'm just showing you the, the tools, but I'll make sure to leave those links on the description. So we can just minimize that. And I'm just going to open up my folder here with all my assets in it. Make sure I reopen that so you know I need that. And I'm just going to make a folder for meshes. And in here you should get your, once you download that you should get the squid doll mesh. And so make doll doll folder. And I'm gonna grab you also should get this material color, drag that, bring it in here. Let's bring this over here. And import and we'll open up this material. Let's delete this. Hold T and click and you'll get the texture sample. Want to get our material color that we just imported. Set that as our base color. Let's save. And now you'll notice your doll came in as three separate pieces. So we will want to go into our blueprint. And I'm actually just going to go doll, select all of these at the same time, hold shift to click the first and last one. And it'll make it really small. You can uh, click this lock and Right, 50 for now for a test and you'll get this make sure these are selected and we'll go to our game core blueprints new folder and we'll call this doll create a new blueprint class and that'll be an actor and that'll be our blueprint doll and we're going to add a static mesh and the meshes figure out how I did this again yeah there we go you just go into your thing and select all three of these by holding shift or control and then you go to add components and you can see, you'll see multiple assets here you can just click static mesh and go to the squid body up here and it should resize everything attached to it yep and i'm just going to look at here i have things set up a little differently so we have our squid body the bow tie which is just there and the head So there we go. And in here, we are going to, the first thing we want to do is rotate the head. So that, so we're just going to delete two of the, or I delete all these for now. Let's recreate them when we need them. Um, I'm going to create a custom event. Let's call this rotate 180. 
right click and get a flip plot which basically allows you to when the game starts it'll go to a and if it's not a it'll do b so from here we're going to want to drag out and i'm actually going to import my sounds so i can set those up as well first i'll get the head rotation done before i set up the sound so we're going to want to drag out timeline right after you right click and add timeline This is going to be the red light rotation speed. And we can create, come in here, create a function, or a float, sorry, right click and click add key, and add a second key. For the first one, it's going to be zero, and the value is going to be one, it's going to be zero. And for the second one, the value is going to be 180. And the length is going to be 0 0.8. And I just messed up there. And make sure you select the second one. 0 0.8. 180. And you want to set the length to 0 0.8. So it's going to close out of this and reopen it so you can see it a little better. So you put your length to 0 0.8. So that's how long it takes to go through the timeline to get to this point. And it's going to go from 0 to 180 in 0.8 seconds. And you can adjust the, that value how far it will rotate or, or your time length right here. And you may want to make sure your final one is matching up with the length here. So there's our red light. We can just copy and paste this. Green light rotation speed. And basically, you just want to flip the values on these, 180, 0. So we'll move from 180 back to 0 in 0.80, in 0.8 seconds. And we want to play from start. And from here, actually, I want my red light. And right click that and rename it rotation and we'll do the same thing for our green light. And now that'll rename this for us. You want to get our doll head. And we want to set relative rotation on update. So as this is updating, it's gonna update, it's gonna con update the uh, rotation over 0.8 seconds and the rotation we want is from 0 to 180 but we're just wanted on the Z so it rotates you look at the doll head and you click the rotation the Z axis is what rotates it around the circle so I want it to rotate back and forth and so we want our rotation in our Z axis And we can just comment this, copy this and paste it up right here like this. And the same thing here, it'll rotate it back. Let's give it a little comment, rotate head over time. Let me just delete that out of the scene now. Go to our doll blueprints. It's going to place that in the world. And I'm going to create a tick event. This is what we're going to use to run it. We're going to add a delay. We're going to random float in range. Gonna set this to two and 
six so that between two and six seconds when this will trigger and we'll rotate 180 so every two to six seconds it will allow it to get through this delay node to re-trigger it So now we can just test this now. And you can see your head rotates and it should rotate back randomly every two to six seconds. And we can actually go into our green light and I'm going to set this to two so that the head rotates slower. I just want to make sure you set your time for your final value to two. That's what I mean, where you can adjust the time. There's an example of it there. So now your head will rotate. And then it'll come back slower. So that's how that's going to work. And we're also just going to want to go and select all these, hold shift. And I'm going to set the size to 150. I have the lock on here, so that allows it to set all all three of these values at once. I'm just going to turn off that once I'm done, because I don't always want to be doing that. So now she's obviously a lot bigger. And I'm just going to quickly set up the map here. Delete all of these. And what I did was just hold alt drag this and I'll create a copy of it. Drag this one out. And we can just drag our piece right here. Select this one, hold alt, drag it out. And we can hold alt on this one and just bring it over there. And I have this one set to size 30. Thirty. So everything fits together. Delete that, or you can just use it as your own text. You can always just get a text actor right here like that. Drag it in and make your own text. I delete that thing and put this underneath the map just because it they don't need to be visible right now. I just like it to look a little cleaner. Uh, we can delete our player out of here. World settings. Third person game mode, which is the game mode that you can search for it. It's right here. And drag the player start over here. And if you notice you move it, that's be if you ever get this, that's because it's it, it's inside of something else. So you'll notice you just want to drag it up above that. I'm gonna hold alt and just create a second one. So I have multiple starting points. And then I will take this doll, rotator 90 degrees. Place her near the end here. And place actors. Geometry. 
And I'm just going to make a finish line just so you know exactly where the finish line is. You can grab this box. These are pretty useful because you can uh, go into your details and adjust the sizes here. You can manually adjust those, but I'm just going to set. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to manually adjust them. So I'm going to set this to 100. Z to 5. Makes it flat and bring it down to the world. And Y. Just gonna drag it out. It's way too far. So there now we have a finish line. game core you want to create some new folder materials I'll put four material hold three and select and you can get some textures hold T to get your texture in here but uh I'm just gonna quickly set this up with a color and the color we're gonna use is somewhere in here with the in the yellowish Make it look like this, like sand, kind of. Save that. Something I always like to do is in a blueprint. You want to go to save and compile, like success only. So when you compile, it'll auto save it. Just saves. I just find it annoying having to save and compile all the time. So there's our floor material, and you can just right click and duplicate that. And a wall material. And the wall I'm just going to set to a blue. Hold Alt, and you can select all of the walls here. You can put in the wall material, select the floor, put in the floor material. In for that one too. And then we'll fix the lighting in one second as well. Um, it's going to duplicate this one more time. And you could also just. I'll show you with this one actually. Open up this. Right click, convert to a parameter, call it color. And you can click create a master color. Create a material instance. MI underscore finish line. And you can just use this for one. You can just create instances of all of these and just set the color to whatever you want. For each of your instances, right click instance wall, right click instance floor, and just have a master material. And that's how that would work. So select this and click the arrow here, and that will set the finish line to red. So now we have a little bit of color in here. Save all. To head back into our doll. Blueprint. And we're going to create a variable called red light. And the way this is going to be set is if so if we fit once the head finishes rotating, we're going to set red light. So that's when the player is going to be able to die. We don't want to set it before because as soon as you set before the head even starts rotating, we get the player can die. And for green and for the, when it goes back to green light, we're just going to set red light to false here. 
So that as soon as the hit, as soon as she says green light, you can start running again. But you could always put that on the finish here, so you gotta wait for her head to fully finish rotating back. And I'm also going to import some sounds. So new folder sounds. And the sounds I have are green light, red light, the round sound, and the doll music. So on this website, that'll be in the link of the red light, green light. Um, this one right here for the sound and the round st sound right here. And I converted them to wa wave. So I can just select all of these, drag them over here, and I have all these sounds already all set up in here, then I'm ready to go. I click play sound location. Play from start. And the location we just need blank for now. And right here is going to be red light. And we can Control C to copy that. Green light. Okay, so now she will say red light and green light when we click play. And she's rotating when she rotates her head. You can hear her saying that there. And we'll also want to, I'm just going to move this over a bit, and delay here 0.2 seconds just so the sound matches up a little better with the rotation because the sounds obviously aren't made for a game. It's going to play the red light, green light sounds. I'm going to try to finish this whole thing in one video, even though it might be a little long, but I'd rather have the whole game complete in one quick video, or a long video, I guess. It's not, there's not too much left to it, I suppose. A lot of it was just setting up the projects and things there. So we have our head rotation playing the red light, green light sound. And so that's everything for the rotate it's the rotate head and I'll just comment that we need to do a few more things in our quick event in our tick event so we're going to need to create another boolean That's going to be for game starting, so basically the beginning of the game, playing the music at the beginning of the game, we're going to want to drag this out of here, because we're going to want to do a few things before that. So we're going to game starting. And we're only going to do this once, because if you don't put this here, it'll play the sound as long as the game is not started. It'll continue going through this. Instead of just once, and the sound gets really weird if you do that. From here, we're going to want to play sound application. And the sound we're going to use is the round sound. And from here, we want to delay, and the sound, the sound is about 10 seconds, so we're going to delay for that length of time. Move this over some more. And I'm going 
going to set this boolean to true by default. So when the player comes through here and once the delay ends, then that's when the ground will start. We're going to need to get our begin play and get our character reference so we can have access to our movement because we're going to disable movement before the round starts. And we're going to get our third person character. Right click player character. So we can get our player character. Multiple variable. I'm going to call that character reference. Up at the top there. And I'm just going to minimize this component. I have a reference to our character that we can use. The first thing we're going to want to do here is get our character reference. Continue moving this over. Get our character movement component. And we're going to be enabling movement here. So we're going to want to set movement mode to walking. And we can just continue on into the head rotation from there. So basically after the music plays, the game is starting, it ends. And then we can set our player to common things. Enable movement. And we're going to disable movement to begin play with our character. So you want to go into your character blueprint. Just going to close out of these materials. Go to your bent graph. We'll come over here. Type in begin play. Get our character movement. Type in disable movement. So now we are setting it there. So basically, game starting. And we want if the game starting is false. So basically, if it's not the very first time you started the game, we want to come all the way over here and just rotate the head like normal without doing any of the beginning game stuff. Starting gameplay sound. Comment this. I keep that bubble there actually because the being get play bubble, nothing's gonna be around that. There we go. So now we play we disabled. And you'll get the starting sound. Round. round starts. Red light. Green light. And for the doll music, for her ta actually talking, for the beginning one, I put that. I just put the, a play sound node right in between right here, just so it plays at once, because it doesn't actually really fit into the game. I just did it more so because just to see how it sound. And this material open. So now we have this done. We have our movement disabled. We can quickly. And uh, don't need to do that, I guess. Well, we will go into our 
character. We will deal with killing the player now, so when the AI sees you. So first we want to create a boolean that determines if the player is dead. Custom event. You right click. Kill player. Hold B and click to get a branch. And we're going to check if the player is dead. And we're going to get actor class, which allows you to get access to the doll without casting or anything like that. The doll. And from here, we can get access to the red light variable. Red light is on, and if it is, we'll kill the player and if they're moving. So we'll first create a reference to the doll. Red light. And then we're going to have to equal boolean and check if our red light is true. And boolean. We're also going to check for our movement. So we'll get character movement, velocity, right at the bottom. And you're going to click does not equal. So I'm going to type this for not equal. And you can use your tolerance, so you can adjust that variable to determine if the character is slightly moving, if it's going to do it or not. But right now, the character is not moving, and the red light is true. Create a branch. So the character is not move. So the red light is true, and the character is not moving. Then we're good to go. So basically, it's checking if we're not moving. So if we, it's red light and we're not moving, then this will come back false. And if it's a red light and we are moving, then that means that this is not this is not uh, true. So that means both of these aren't uh, coming back true. At the at the same time, so you'd want to run out of the true variable. Yeah, okay, this is where I was getting mixed up here. This is not checking if we're moving, this is checking if our velocity is not equal to zero. So our velocity is not equal to zero, that means we're moving. So it's red light, and our velocity is not equal to zero, then that means we're moving, and it's a red light. So you want to kill the, this is where we're going to kill the player. So we're going to set simulate physics and we're going to set that on the mat oops I just opened up visual studio i meant to do that and we also want to get our capsule component simulate physics tick on simulate and we want to go into our mesh scroll down to here Type in custom and we want to click collision enabled query and physics. This will prevent the player from falling through the map. We want to set that our player is dead. And we have going to complete the game, which is another one that I'm going to set up in a minute. So we're going to kill the player. And I'm just going to make a custom event called complete game. And this is going to have a retriggerable delay so that if this runs through this again, 
and we're going to check if we're winning and if we're also if we're dead. So basically, if we're in the finish line, we come back out, then this will be able to be triggered again. So you'll actually be able to die after you leave the finish line. So we'll make a variable to check over in the winning zone. Or if the player is dead. And if either of these are true when this completes, we'll be to make a branch. Then we will open level by name. And the name you'd want to name, have it whatever your map is. So you can create a lobby to send them there. And then from the lobby, create something else to send them back here. And I'll be doing, and I'll showing you how to do that in a future video. But for now, we're just going to be sending them to the beginning of game one until I've set that up. Game one. So basically, this will, this is how this will run. So if the trigger will delay, which is five point five seconds, is what I decided to set it to. That's just about after where she says green light again, after you die, if you were to die, most of the time. Um, so we're going to kill the player. And complete the game. And then it's going to delay it five seconds, so your player will lay dead for 5.5 seconds, and then it'll check if you're dead, you're winning, and it, you are dead, so it will restart the level. So that's our kill event finished. And we're also going to want to check if our player is in the winning zone. So that we don't end up running through here and killing our player while they're inside the winning zone. And we're going to go ahead and make the actual winning zone now. So we'll be able to, to determine if we are in it or not. And we're going to be using a collision volume for that. So I'm just going to go in my blueprints, right click, create a folder called volumes, blueprint class actor. It's going to be the end game volume. And all we need in here is a collision for a box collision. Go to our event graph, delete all these. And all we're going to do in here is make the overlaps for in game collision. So we want to scroll down here all the way to the bottom with this end game collision selected. On begin overlap, select it again on end overlap. And cast a third person character. So if it is the character, I'm just going to clean that up a little more. So I'm using it twice. So I'm just going to create this once. Get our player character. Drag out, promote to a variable. So basically when this volume is created, it's going to create a reference to the character. So when the game starts, the volume is, if it's in the world, it's created. So we can get our character reference and our other actor is equal to our character reference. Then put this in like that. We will drag out of our, we will get our character reference again. 
and we'll want to set winning zone. And we, that means if we are inside the collision, then we're in the winning zone. And then we'll run the complete game event. And then it'll wait 5.5 seconds. And we'll also want to get our character reference for that as well. It doesn't pop up for you for whatever reason. You just drag out your character reference and get complete game. And we can just copy these and paste them down here and check if our other actor that's overlapping is our character. And then if, it, if it's on end overlap, we'll disable the winning zone. So if this is running the event here for 5.5 seconds and you leave the zone, and you're still alive. So you're technically not in the winning zone anymore. This will be false. So you won't be able to complete the game and you still have a chance. And that means you won't be here, so it won't be false. You'll be able to actually t t die again. So you want to stay in the winning zone until the game is over. And that's why we use the retriggerable delay right here, so that if we're we can. It's not just going to play and then we leave the zone and then it continue, continues it and, you just, and even after you die, you can still win the game. And so if you, die, if you were to die, it would play the complete game. And then it would trigger this. It started at 5.5 seconds from when you die. And we can just put this volume in the world here. And you can scale it to whatever size you want, and once the player is within it, then they will be finished the game. Let's try to scale it to a decent size here for the finish line. Need to be perfect, I guess, because you're not going to be able to actually get inside the walls. Basically, as long as covering this area behind the finish line. Now we should have it set up so we can actually die. still. Red light. I'm just going to check the collision over here and see what resets the game. So that resets the game, but there is something wrong with the kill player, so if you're dead or you're in the winning zone, this should be false. That's, that's probably why it's not killing the player. So we're getting our doll reference, checking it's red light, and if we're moving, oh yeah, um, we want to go into our doll blueprint, and we actually want to call the event for killing them. So, on the event tick, we'll call get our character reference. And we'll kill player. And we'll drag over here. So that's passing all the stuff for the beginning game. Now we'll run the kill the player event on 
check when the game starts. And basically in here, it's checking the player's dead. And it's checking if the red light's true. So the red light's true, it'll kill the player and complete the game. Shouldn't be able to die while I'm in here. Yep. Here starts because I was on the finish line for five seconds. And at any time, I should be able to. While the red light is active, I, should, I press walk at any point in time. I move, it will kill me. So that's going to be everything for this one. It's a bit of a long episode, but we got the whole thing here complete. And we even got a way to end the game setup. We can also change that name of the level to, the lo to a lobby. And then we can create a collision in the lobby that will send us back to, a to the level or whatever you want to do there. And I'll, but I'll be showing you how to do that in a future video. And we set up more stuff for this. I'm thinking about setting up the lobby room with the beds and stuff like that. And just a door they walk up to and that's where you start the game if you found this video helpful and want to see more don't forget to hit the like subscribe button so you don't miss out on any tutorial video uploads if you have any questions suggestions or comments feel free to leave those in the comment section below or join my community discord using the link in the description thanks and i'll see you all in the next one